Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Outdoor Florida webinar. This month, our special guest will be Lisa Lake, Executive Director of Bike Florida. She will provide an overview of the many rides, tours, and awareness raising events they lead throughout the state, including tours on the renowned Florida Coast to Coast Trail from St. Petersburg to Titusville. At the end of Lisa's presentation, we will have a question and answer session, so please hold all questions until then. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available to view on YouTube at the end of the week. So Lisa, after a lifetime of cycling in other parts of the country, Lisa moved to Florida in 2010 and found herself cycling more than ever due to the weather and the amazing pedestrian bike trail system in Florida. Most of her career was spent as an event planner for nonprofits and in 2020, she, she joined Bike Florida as an assistant director. Lisa was put in charge of event planning for Bike Florida's resurgence from COVID. She became executive director in 2021. After COVID, Lisa helped to guide Bike Florida to become more inclusive and community-minded. They began running tours across the state on the Florida Coast to Coast Trail and efforts to call attention to the trail and its many features, helping the effort to see the trail finished and most of all, to promote safe biking for all kinds of cyclists. They now lead 500, more than 500 people over the coast to coast trail during their tour season, which is October through April, and have added tours elsewhere in the state to promote other trails. All right, Lisa, if you'd like to take it away. Good goes. morning, everybody in webinar land. Um, I'm Lisa Lake, and as Doug has said, I've been uh, executive director of Bike Florida since 2021 in January, so I just finished my let's count third year, or going into my third year. Um, it's been a wild ride taking us out of COVID uh, and into you know the fray of trails that are being finished and unfinished, and there's a lot of demanding work out there. We try to get as many people onto the trails, and then we take all the numbers of uh, who we've sent over and what they've spent, uh, and we kind of push that off to our sister org, and we'll talk more about that later, Florida Bikes Bicycle Association, who kind of takes those numbers and pushes them up to Tallahassee, where our lobbyists for the trails, um, you know, try to try to get things moving. Um, the Coast to Coast Trail is, I think that project has been diminished by two years, uh, thanks to our numbers being, you know, and everybody else using that trail. There's a section that is about 20 something miles that we have to bust people over during our tours. And we really wanna see that finished as soon as possible. Um, okay, I'm going to, it's okay to share my screen now. Okay, I have a little PowerPoint presentation so you can follow along. Um, this is just the Bike Florida. Uh, we're gonna go on to a brief history. 1992, Bike Florida is established to help communities in the state of Florida expand their bicycle awareness, education, and infrastructure through bicycle tourism. To accomplish this, Bike Florida ran two to three tours per year. Many will remember the big spring tours consisting of over 600 participants with camping and lots of road riding. I'm gonna cover that right now. That is something that we did previous to me coming on board. I actually went on one of them. Um, it, but it's something that we decided not to resurrect right now. We probably will in the future because we're more focused on promoting the trail system in Florida than road riding, which is what a lot of the spring tour was. Okay, 2020 COVID comes along and halts touring for two years, 20 and 21. We ran one tour. Actually, we didn't run any tours in 2021. We, we revamped. We had a tour planned for the fall. Uh, and that uh, resurgence of COVID came and we said, okay, now we'll, we'll wait another six months. Um, although our mission has not changed, Bike Flora has changed our approach to achieving that mission. Uh, our mission is just to be more inclusive, to help uh, communities, cities, towns, burgs with infrastructure, um, which means getting bike racks into their uh community, getting uh, bike stanchions that have the tools so people can ride their bikes, but also have a place to fix their bikes or air up their tires. Uh, and then just bringing awareness to the community through literature and bike promotions. We give away bikes in certain communities throughout the state. Uh, and then we run all kinds of classes uh, 
for bike education for everywhere from kids learning how to ride, uh, bicycle helmet fitting, uh, group riding, lead riding. Um, so yeah, we have it all over the state. Today, Bike Florida runs 10 to 12 tours per year, averaging 40 participants per tour. The majority of these tours are across the state of Florida using the Florida Coast to Coast Trail. So that we, our most popular tour, Doug was asking us before, is the Sunflower Tour, which is an all women's tour. Um, and then right behind that is the 55 and over tours. Um, people of that age group, me being one of them, have the time and the resources to go on tours for three to four days. And we're really enjoying seeing people into their 80s, um, occasionally into their 90s with us on tour. Florida works with cities and towns across Florida to bring cycling awareness, education, and biking infrastructure to communities. Okay. Bike Florida tours offered between October 22nd and April 2023. Our, our, we don't ride in the summertime. Um, it's too hot for me and for most people, uh, especially the over 55 groups. So we let people do that on their own if they're fit enough and you know committed enough to cycling. Uh, but we find that October to April is the perfect before it gets too hot season. Uh, we ran four 55 and over coast to coast tours. Uh, average age on those tours, surprisingly, is about 65 to 68 years old, which is really, really cool, I think. Uh, we run two all ages, 18 plus coast to coast tours, and we get a lot of families on those tours, which is really, really neat, too. Uh, we run two all women's coast to coast tours, famously known as our Sunflower Tours. And we also ran a Lighthouse Tour and a Florida Keys Tour. And we have more of that offered for the fall as well. Florida T Keys Tour is on the list. Um, our new season is out. So if you want to head over to our website at any point, you can see all the way through December our tours that are up and available. Uh, this is from one of the old spring tours. So the big Bike Florida welcome. Our logo has changed, as you can see by my T-shirt. Um, but this is what the the whole process looks like when we go on tour. If we have to stop someplace, we have, you know, banners and flags and tents and everything. Um, we adopted the slogan Tours with a Purpose a while back, probably 2017-18. And I always have to explain that to people. So I will explain that. What does that mean? It means low cost comparatively tours comparative to the other tours that are out there, that help boost inclusivity. This means people who might not be able to go on a $3,000 tour can go on an under $1,000 tour. Uh, touring brings a chance to educate participants about the areas they are cycling through. So when we begin a tour, I begin about a month out from the tour beginning, I begin a series of emails. And in those emails, I describe what's actually going to happen every day, what the schedule is going to look like, what trail we'll be riding on every day and what the certain perks or you know things to look for on that trail, the history of the trail. So people really, I feel, if they're reading it, get a sense of where they are cycling through and the history of what they're cycling through. Um, all dollars spent on tour help econ helps economy through throughout the state, cities, and towns. So uh, we're a nonprofit, we don't pay tax, but the people that are buying things as they roll through places like um, uh, on the West Orange Trail, Winter Garden, uh, Claremont, all of that, they have time. They have free time in the afternoon when they get back to do as they please. And then dinner is on their own. So they're also infusing the economy with their money for dinner. Here is our first uh, sunflower tour. So those are our jerseys that we designed for them. And every year we keep the same jersey, but we just change the background color. This year's color was a teal and uh, next year's will be a plum. So they're really, really sweet jerseys. Uh, what kind of impact do Bike Florida tours have? Based on coast to coast tours, we run eight tours, 320 participants per year. Uh, the trails are listed um, all the way across. And the average dollar spent per participant is 1,250. That includes their meals, little things, new jerseys that they might buy at bike shops they encounter, 
um, you know, drinks, everything. We asked, we do a survey afterwards and we asked them, you know, to tabulate their receipts and let us know what beyond the cost of the, of the tour they spent. Bike Flora offered the following community classes between October 22nd and April 2023. So this is the other part of us. When we're not on tour, we are out in the community. Um, we have different people who uh, do these classes for us. I do with some of them. We do a safe cycling educational class, which is helmet fitting, group riding, trail and road riding etiquette, which we find is very important. Um, we are in the middle of uh, putting those on our website after getting some good people to video it for us. Um, bike Repair 101, which just means how to change a tire, how to get debris out of your bike after rolling through some of the trails. If it's raining, how to dry off your bike uh, when you come into the hotel, uh, which is important. And, um, you know, how to lube up things. And, well, if you're cyclists, you know. Um, cycling first aid 101. This is really important. We kind of do a little mini, uh, what do you do if you fall and scrape yourself? Um, uh, all the SAG vehicles carry and, and the, the SAG, the rest stops carry first aid kits. So it's kind of, you know, clean out the abrasion, put ointment on it, all of that stuff. And we do encourage people to pack in their bike bags, just a small plastic bag full of bandages of assorted sizes and maybe a little ointment cream. Um, basic bike education, which is just about uh, the things basically in the first one, educational classes. We do a ride leading class, lead rider certification class, which we just finished, um, I think in Vero Beach. And that was very, we had a few of our people who have been riding as ride tours actually become lead rider certification, which was important to us. Um, that's a great certification to have if you're in a bike club, if you're, because if anything ever happens and your, you know, group tour rider, or your lead rider goes missing, you can step in. Uh, bike Florida offered the following community, mm -hmm. yeah, events between October 22nd and April, 2023. Uh, we did a metric century in and around Groveland, Florida. Part of what we do is, is contract with certain cities to bring cycling to their community, um, which then means that we attend events that they have. In Groveland, we attend their second Friday market and raffle off a bike, uh, actually give away for free, a bike uh, at every second Friday. We have put in uh, workstations around the area. We have connected with community uh, places and people to have our literature in there about cycling in Groveland and cycling with Bike Florida. Uh, it's become a team effort to try to get more people on bikes because that is the area where the unfinished part of the trail is. So we want to be ready for when the trail runs through there. Um, we do monthly family fun rides in Groveland as well. So uh, once a month on a Saturday, uh, families come and bike throughout the, they have a choice of three, five and 10 mile uh, routes that we put out. Um, they do breakfast and then, you know, kind of have a little after party with some food trucks. And yeah, we like to get that into more communities. Uh, we tried doing a bike and lunch in Brooksville, Florida, where we were having people, you know, bike along the trails and then eat lunch. That was not uh, as successful as we thought it was going to be. Um, but I think because it was a late rollout and we're going to try that again in the fall um, in a couple of different communities. Um, monthly bicycle giveaways, we do that in various communities. If we attend an event, we always, you know, we we um, get together with certain bike shops. And if we buy a bike, then they gift a bike. So we always have plenty on hand to do the giveaway. Um, how does Bike Florida get their money for funding? Most of it comes through the Share the Road plate. Uh, if you don't have one, I advocate for you getting one. Um, which you can go on to our website and buy it right there. It's a great way to show your support for cycling and a great way to keep people aware of the fact that we are still struggling with the vehicle and bicycle situation. Uh, sharing the road uh, is, is a problem in Florida. That's why Bike Florida mostly sticks to trails for safety reasons. Um, yeah. How is Bike Florida funded? 
Due to the low cost of our tours, touring is not the major source of our funding. Keeping costs low promotes our values in, of organization and inclusivity. Other sources of income share the road license plate, and then we also get sponsors for our tours and our education classes. Um, that comes from colleges, from bicycle shops, from community members who donate to have these things at hand for their community and for others to have. Uh, donations is a, is a big part of our existence. And we just opened up this year an online shop featuring Bike Florida cycling gear and swag. It's not all Bike Florida. It's uh, got a bunch of different designs uh, on there with uh, all kinds of things from hoodies to uh, sleeves to, yeah, yeah, pop on there and take a look. It's some fun stuff. This is about the share of the road. Um, just to let you know what buying the plate does for Bike Florida and for your community. Funds from every plate help support educational programs to make drivers and bicyclists safer, community assistance to design people-friendly streets, bicycle events to raise awareness, outreach activities to promote sharing the road. So our sister org, Florida Bicycle Association, partners with us when the proceeds from the plates come in, uh, they come in, you know, on a regular basis, and then we disperse them to a promoting the plate, and then also funding our the programs that both organizations uh, have out there. Uh, it's been a great collaboration, and it's becoming even stronger. There's a new. Um, uh, you might remember Becky Alfonso was the executive director, and she left a couple of years ago. And Kelly Morphy is now executive director of Florida Bicycle Association. And we have found a synergy that is, you know, just we're we're doing so much together and looking forward to doing even more. So again, if you don't have the plate, grab one. Thanks. And this is just a little promo for both of our organizations, um, which I explained the synergy between the two of us. And I think um, that's it. Does okay. anybody have any questions? Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so if you would put your questions in the chat at the bottom, and I'm gonna start it off with a couple questions while you're getting your questions together. So uh, how did your routes, how did you decide on the different routes you take? You, you do more than one route in Florida. So did you, uh, do you scout these out and just how did you plan these routes that you're taking? Uh, get on our bikes and ride. <laughs> <laughs> basically. I mean, the coast to coast tour is the coast to coast tour. That's already all, right. all out. Uh, the biggest thing we have to do when we plan routes is especially we have to keep track and, and we have connections all over the state that tell us whether there's some sort of construction going on, whether a trail is closed during our touring season. So we have to find workarounds all the time, but mostly it's just getting on our bikes and riding around until we find the most, you know, the greatest and best way to get to where we want to go. Okay. And the Sunflower Tour, um, who came up with the name for that? Just curious how the name came uh, about. Uh, that was the uh, last executive director, Joy Hancock. Uh, she and I kind of collaborated on that. And it's um, we have a whole promo about it on our website. The sunflowers in Florida exist in the most bizarre places where you think flowers won't grow. In drought, you know, they're extremely drought tolerant. Um, extremely heat tolerant, and we like to say that you know the sunflowers on our tour are like those flowers. Okay, I like that. And um, do you have a newsletter that people can sign up for? Um, what's the uh, yes, we do. Here? Yep, we have a newsletter. It's not monthly. It's kind of like whenever I have something I need to say. So it's every two to three months, uh, at least five times a year. Uh, yes, and you can sign up on our website. Okay. And do you mostly uh, have volunteers helping you or do you uh, have a staff of part-time folks or full-time folks? Yeah, that's a great question and something yeah. I should have put in the uh, programming. Um, we do have, I'm a full-time staffer and we have a part-time staffer who handles uh, our bikes on tour because that's a huge, a huge commitment. Someone who is trained to put them into the van the right way and make sure that no metal is touching metal. We have a whole, whole rack system set up. Um, and I found that the most important thing to uh, have to pay somebody to do because they're really caring about it. Um, otherwise, we have all volunteers and we're so grateful for them. So 
everywhere from the SAG stops to people riding along the course to people riding with the riders on the course are all volunteers. And we greatly appreciate them. Excellent. And I assume they have some kind of safety training and so forth. Uh, yes. If they're riding yes. on the course and so forth. Yep. Yeah. They have training in everything. They can repair simple bike repairs. They can diagnose whether we need to get somebody to a bike shop. Um, and they also are trained ride leaders. Excellent. So we do have a couple questions and comments. So um, uh, from the Florida Bicycle Association, uh, thank you, Lisa, for all that you're doing to make Florida more bicycle friendly. And uh, Karen Smoke to everyone, I think it is great that the two organizations are working together. And as you said, it sounds like it's a great partnership. Monique has yeah. asked a question. Does it come to the Treasure Coast area? Uh, yes. Yes, well, we are planning something out there. Very, yes, yes, we will be there. <laughs> okay. That's right. in the works. Excellent. And Doug asked a question, can you detail what a typical day looks like on one of your tours? Um, sure. Uh, let's take the 55 and over. Um, so the first day is all about either, we go in two different directions. We either start riding in St. Pete and ride to Titusville and then bus back to St. Pete or we get on a bus early in the morning, go over to Titusville and ride back to St. Pete. Um, we do that because the night before people come and they stay and we wanna give both sides of the coast equal access to our you know, clientele. So they stay in hotels, they eat there, uh, they spend money. Uh, so we think it's important to share that wealth between the two coasts. Um, it, so the typical day would be get up in the morning from your hotel. We'll take day two because day one is just riding to the destination. Uh, day two would be get up in the hotel. It's uh, breakfast and then all your luggage down in the lobby by 730 to get on the bus. Um, the bus driver holds the luggage. Uh, and then we usually have a morning meeting at about quarter to eight. Eight o'clock is you know, wheels up and we're on our way. Uh, there's two SAG stops. So if we have a 60 mile day, they're usually at 20 and 40. We have provisions for anyone and any kind of diet on our, on our rest stops. And it's usually a, a meal for people um, so that they don't have to stop for lunch. Of course, stopping for lunch in certain areas is definitely encouraged because you're spending tourism dollars. And also, you, you, know, you get to know a little bit about a town. And the way our, our rides are structured, you can't get into the hotels until 4 o'clock anyway. So we always tell people to stop and smell the roses. It's, that's really important. You know, take pictures. Um, you know, don't don't think of it as a point A to point B and kind of a tour. It's a tour to meander a little bit. Um, so after the ride ends and you roll into the hotel, uh, your luggage is all in a room, one room that we always secure with the hotel. So you can get at your stuff even if you can't uh, check into your hotel room yet. And then we get into our hotel rooms and usually have a happy hour in the lobby um, between four and five. And then people kind of wander off in groups to do their own thing for dinner. That way they can. We don't supply dinner um, because we know that people have so many different uh, diet restrictions and likes and dislikes. Uh, so we found it easier to let everybody kind of just forage for their own. Um, sometimes we all end up at one restaurant just by chance, which is kind of fun, or bigger groups do. And then it's uh, asleep by between eight and nine, I find most people are in bed because the next day you're going to have another 60 miles or 45 to 60 miles to do. Okay. So uh, we have a question here from Maureen. Uh, when and where is your next event? Uh, all those can be found on the website. Our next event is actually the Sunflower Tour, which kicks off next oh, event or tour. Uh, it says okay. event, but it could be a tour, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're almost at the end of our events. We have a few that we're running in Brooksville, but for tours, the Sunflower Tour is starts next Thursday. And then after that, the beginning of April, there is an all ages uh, coast to coast tour. Um, does Bike Florida have a list of hotels lodging that you recommend along the C2C for cyclists? Uh, yes, we do. So if you drop me an email, lisa at bikeflorida.org, I can supply you with all of the people that we uh, deal with. I would love to send them even more, um, you know, clients. It'd be great. Excellent. And I was curious about, uh, is the breakfast uh, part of the motel or is it something you provide or people provide for themselves? 
On the first day, we do breakfast because we're kicking off at wherever we start from, either in Titusville. We supply that. But other than that, we contract with hotels that have breakfast included. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I did notice that the uh, in comparing some of the other tour companies that your your cost is much lower than most of these other tours. And I guess that's partly because you're funded by donations and uh, the license plate, I assume. And also yes. because people have to do their own dinner. I, I think that. Yeah. Yeah. Because people do their own dinner. And also just because we want to stay inclusive and, you know, we could make we could make a lot of money. But that's not to me. That's not what a nonprofit is about. We should be including people who might not be able to have a chance to go on a tour like this. Uh, we also have donations come in that we always have at least one person on tour on scholarship. So. All right. And so we have a question from Doug. Is any type of bike acceptable? Uh, yes. We always say if you can ride it, we'll, we'll carry it along for you. So we have e-bikes, we have recumbents, we have tandems, we have a variety of bikes on every tour that we ride. All are welcome. And Maureen asked, are your family tours shorter than the other tours? Uh, no, they're the same length of time. But again, you can always choose to come off at one of the SAG stops. So if 20 miles is your thing for the day, you come off at the first SAG stop and get transported. If 40 miles is the end of your ride, then you come off at the second SAG stop. So it's kind of like make your own tour. Okay. And is there a, an option to rent bikes? Question came in. Uh, yes, there is. We contract in St. Petersburg with a uh, bike shop called ABC, who does our rentals. Uh, and then we usually do that even if we're going over to Titusville. Um, and I, you know, connect you with the person over there that handles rentals. You fill out the form. And then most times we can pick up the bike for you and bring it down to you know, the, the start of the tour. Um, so that is all ready for you. Okay. Uh, here's a question. Can we join anywhere along the tour or do we have to all start at the same location? Um, you have to start at the same location just for insurance purposes so that we know that everybody on that tour is there and accounted for and insured. Okay. There's another question. Where did you ride before you came to Florida? Oh, all over the place. I was in Connecticut for 50 years, um, so riding all over the New England states. And uh, then I did a stint in Texas and rode along there, one in Portland, Oregon. Uh, those, That's some good biking. Um, I've, ridden in, I've ridden in Colorado. I've ridden um, in the Midwest, uh, California. I've ridden in, New, in Mexico and New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all over the country. And I was curious, uh, do, are people, when they go on your tour, are they inspired to do long trips like across the country and that type of thing? So they kind of get their feet wet on your trips and, and maybe yeah. get inspired? Some of them, exactly. Some of them do. Once they know they can do a distance like that for four days in a row, uh, sometimes they're like, okay, so I can do this for a week, two weeks, three weeks, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any more questions. Does anybody have any more questions before we close? Uh, here's another one. Let's see. Let's see. Karen writes, I'm a, I am a warm showers host, even though I'm not yet on a designated bicycle route yet. US 15 is coming. USBR 15 is coming. I have had five hosting requests since the first of the year. Hearing a lot of comments about the reservation system for our state parks and a vague hiker biker policy. Since cyclists typically arrive after 4 p.m. and leave just after sunrise, would love to see our parks set up accommodations for cyclists and day use areas when campgrounds are full. Any ideas on how to encourage a policy change for that? That is something that we actually, I am, you know, invested in working on. Uh, I agree, especially when you roll into a campground, even after dark and you're not permitted to enter um, because a campground is closed. The hours we're trying to get uh, um, campgrounds to set aside a spot just for cyclists, you know, it can be at the beginning of the campground where there's a spot where you can just, you know, lock up your bike and get a good night's sleep. Um, so stay tuned. We are working on that. Any other questions? 
I'm also right. a host on warm showers. So there are always a person staying at my house the night before the tour, which is kind of neat. And for those who don't know it, could you describe what warm showers is about? Uh, yeah, warm showers is a hosting site for cyclists in particular, uh, where you go on and you can, if you're cycling through an area and you, you know, have done, done your 80, 90 miles or 50 or 60 or whatever you've done, you can kind of look on the website and find somebody in the area that you're looking to stop at. And most hosts are really good about last minute reservations. Mm -hmm. So it's about, it's about the community. And it's a volunteer um, situation? Volunteer situation. No money is exchanged. Yep. Excellent. Okay, well, I think we'll go ahead. Do you want to say anything else? Anything come to mind before I wrap it up? Oh, no, I think we're good. Thank you, yep. everyone in webinar land for participating. Okay. Look forward well, to seeing you. you on a tour. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Lisa, again for an outstanding presentation. Thanks for all of you, to all of you for tuning in. And I'll be sending out a survey later today for this webinar and sending out a recording in a couple of days. Uh, next month's webinar will feature outdoor recreation opportunities provided by the South Florida Water Management District, especially along the restored Kissimmee River, which is uh, one of the largest environmental restoration projects in the world. So don't miss it. So if you have any questions, please email me at um, the Office of Greenways and Trails at floridadep.gov. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day and get out there and do some biking. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Woo!